rudders are the underwater part of your boat that controls your direction. Without them, it's really hard to maintain steerage, which means it's really hard to hold the course, which means they're really important. Different rudders have different design features, which gives them different amounts of performance. And this is tailored to what you plan on using the boat for. This is an example of a high performance rudder. This is on a Beneteau First 44.7. Now what this is, it's a very tall and thin rudder, which means that it's very high aspect ratio, so you get tons of lift and very little drag, because the longer the rudder is, this dimension, the more drag you get. At higher speed, this guy works beautifully. Now there's a couple really important parts about a rudder that, are, that really affect its performance. So first off, you have how is the rudder held onto the boat? In this case, it's just by the rudder post. There's nothing else around it, which means all the water that it sees is totally clean. So there's no disturbance from any apparatus just in front of it. So all the water that hits it is perfect, and then it has full performance from that. The downside is there is nothing protecting this. So this is why you get performance or durability. So if you're sailing along and you hit something, it's hitting the rudder. And that is actually considered a fuse at the rudder post junction. So it's designed so that if you hit the rudder, the whole rudder just falls off the boat. That sounds horrible, but if it doesn't, it's gonna rip a hole in the bottom of your boat and then you're gonna sink. It's a trade-off. You get really good performance and then if you bump into something, you're done. When it comes to low speed handling and steerage, this works really well at high speed because it's a high aspect ratio. The problem is when you're trying to maneuver at slow speeds in a marina, this isn't as effective. And there's a trick where you use your propeller to create thrust onto it. Now the distance from your propeller to your rudder is gonna allow that to happen or not. In this case, where they're really far, the propeller is not gonna put any effect on the rudder. So then it's actually good for performance, but you can't do a little trick that you can do with a barn door rudder on a full keel boat with the propeller just stuck in there. This is a barn door rudder. And as you can see, the propeller is right next to it. The rudder is huge. It's like the side, it's, it's like a barn door. It's just a big square thing. Now this was popular because of the thought that a bigger rudder is then gonna move more water and it's better at slow speed, but it's not as effective because you have all this drag. So that's why high performance boats do not have this kind of rudder. Now, the huge advantage when you're in a marina and you're moving at really slow speeds is you have a built-in stern, stern thruster. So the propeller's prop wash is gonna come off and then hit the rudder, which can be turned really sharply. So as the propeller's thrust comes off, it's then gushed one side or the other. So you can actually scoot your stern really easily with the setup. You just turn your rudder hard, gun it, come off, and the boat will just start spinning. Since this is the opposite of performance, and then you go into the durability side, this guy is supported top and bottom. So this is a very well supported rudder and it's completely protected by the keel. If you're gonna hit anything, it's gonna come along and hit the keel and your rudder is spared, which means that you're able to maintain steerage after an accident. The issue with that is all the water is disturbed from coming off the keel. So it's, it's kind of really bad for performance, but really good for durability. And this boat has a really cool feature, which is this little ring up here. So the idea is if you lose your steering quadrant or your cables break or just anything happens to your steering system, you can hook a line to this and actually pull the rudder with your winches one side or the other to keep steering and make your way back to shore. This rudder is on a full keeled custom built steel boat. It's, it's the sucker is built to withstand, not really to perform. But one thing, when you have your rudder post like this and it's completely straight right behind the prop, it gives you a little issue with serviceability. So if you ever need to pull out your prop shaft, you either have to take your rudder off or else pull the prop shaft into the boat and take it out from the inside. So that gets tricky, but there's a way around that. This is an Allberg 30, the sister ship to our Allberg 30 wind puff that we have out in Annapolis. Here we have a full keel boat with a keel hung rudder. What sets this apart from the other full keel with the rudder off the back of the keel is that this one, the rudder post is actually notched. So when you turn the rudder hard over, you can get the prop shaft, you can pull it out, which in this case you can actually see they've taken the prop shaft out and you don't have to remove the rudder to do that. Now that's really good for a serviceability aspect. The only issue is if you're trying to do that whole stern thruster business with the rudder, 
you can't really, because when you turn, the prop is looking at a hole when you turn really hard. So, you win some, you lose some. The rudder and keel become a giant assembly, so the whole thing works together as a solid unit. The rudder is receiving disturbed water from the keel. It's not fresh water hitting it, but it's flowing along it smoothly and then it goes off from there. So it's not as bad as if the rudder set just aft of the full keel. This here is the compromise between those two types. Sorry about the noise. It's a boatyard. People are working. So full keel, you get the protection, but then fin keel, you get more performance. And then with the rudder, if the rudder is hanging aft and like gets more clean water, then it has better performance as well. But then you have the durability issue. So this idea is considered the cruiser's keel. And this notch here is called the cruiser's notch. So you get a big keel, a gap, and then a skeg that protects the rudder before the rudder happens. This is kind of the compromise. It's got better performance than a full keel, but more durability than a spade rudder like we saw in the first Beneteau. Now all the ones we've looked at have one rudder. And because one rudder is half the parts, and half the maintenance and half the work, but half the performance. So when you heal, just how the keel's gonna heal over, the rudder heals and it's less effective. As you heal further, the rudder starts coming out of the water and then you actually have less steerage. With this, this is the racing setup where you have twin rudders. So as you heal, say you go this way, this one comes out of the water and it's worthless, but this one comes down and is perfectly vertical at the deepest point and it gives you really, really good performance and handling. And then when you tack, it's the other way. So this is the ultimate setup for, for performance. Another interesting point to note, this is hung off the transom. So it's at the very end of the boat. So that means any force that it does, it has the most leverage on the rest of the yacht to help control and steer it. While well, here where the rudder's set further forward from the end of the boat, it has less leverage on everything. So it's, you, you give up some performance in that aspect. So in our keel video, we actually looked at this boat and I talked about the skeg hung rudder on this. Now, this is the idea of you have a skeg to give it better support so it's not just hanging by a spade, but then the issue of the skeg being so thin and small that it actually cracked because it's, it's weaker. But a really neat thing, so now, several months later, they're doing repairs on it and you can see where it's actually designed to be serviceable. So if that were to break, it's just a matter of unbolting it, and putting on a new skeg and then hanging your rudder on that again. So that's a really cool aspect that they built into the design of the boat. Now when it comes to performance and handling, there's the feel that you get in the helm. So if the rudder is trailing behind, you are the thing that's going to be pulling on this lever the whole time, no aid. So that's the case when you have transom hung rudders or anything where the rudder post leads completely to the rudder. In this case where it's a spade rudder, which means it just hangs straight down off a rudder post, you have that flexibility. So there's actually, in this case, the rudder post is here. So you have forward, sorry about the noise. So you have forward and then you have aft. So this small forward section actually helps balance out the load in the back and actually it helps liven up and lighten the helm. So that way it's easier to manage. All that other boat with the fiberglass skeg that came all the way down, fiberglass is brittle. This being a metal boat, it gets away with having a very narrow skeg and then a rudder that's fully supported top and bottom. So it's really strong support for the rudder. A really strong material that's very forgiving. If you hit something, it'll bend instead of crack. So that is our video on rudders. Now we turn it over to you. In the comment section, please let us know what kind of rudder do you have? Do you like it? Does it enhance your performance? Are you a cruiser? Are you a racer? And does that change which rudder you prefer to have? Is this something you've ever even thought about before? This is our last video in this boatyard because we're actually about to set sail for Porto in Portugal. If you have any other questions or even suggestions for other videos we could do like this, please let us know in the comment section and we'll be more than happy to either answer your question or make you a video. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. And if you'd like to follow our journey in real time on a map, receive postcards from our ports of call and messages directly to the boat, you can go ahead and become a patron using the link in the description down below.